What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a magnificent day. Today on the homestead, it is planting day. Lots of stuff to plant. On the last video, we got plots ready to plant, and now today we're going to be planting some popcorn, some more cucumbers, some more summer squash, peanuts, and even some cool heirloom okra that a viewer sent us. So on that last video, we got our elephant garlic harvested from right here, got that cleaned up. And take a look at our garlic here. It's curing up nice. Those leaves aren't completely dried up and brittle yet, but they will be soon. And I imagine we can be putting these underneath the barn in just a few more days with these hot and dry conditions we're having. But we got this cleaned up and we got our drip tape back down. We put some of that nature safe organic fertilizer in the furrows so we got two rows right here that are spaced kind of five feet apart or so we're probably going to do half cukes half summer squash on one of those and then all different kinds of summer squash on the other row and then we got six rows over here dedicated for our popcorn so a lot of what we're doing today is what we call succession planting and we do a lot of that down here in the south where we can grow pretty much year round. There are a couple months, August, September, where it's too hot to grow hardly anything, but we can grow stuff pretty much year round here in zone 8B. So we've got some squash and cucumbers over that way that are just producing really, really well right now. So why would we be planting more squash and cucumbers? Well, as those plants get older, they'll start to get ridden with some diseases and pest pressure and stuff and yeah we could leave them there and just milk them for everything they're worth but what we like to do is when that happens to those plants yank them up out of there and have some more that are ready to produce so we're not just providing a breeding ground for pests and diseases so that's what we're doing today and when our squash and cucumbers start to get producing really really well that's when we like to go ahead and plant some more now we won't plant them all throughout the summer because at some point it's just too hot and the pest and disease pressure is too high. That usually happens around early July, sometimes towards the end of July, just depending on the year. But we can at least get one more round of squash and cukes in the ground. As far as the corn goes, last year I succession planted sweet corn and did really well with that. I think I planted three rounds of sweet corn last year during the warmer months. I already got some sweet corn over there tasseling right now. So we should have some good eating ears on that in probably two to three weeks. But instead of planting more sweet corn, I want to get popcorn to try. Never tried growing popcorn here. So our corn succession is going to involve popcorn this year. And then we'll probably just turn around and plant some more sweet corn come fall. So let's start off with the popcorn. We're going to plant that with our mechanical planter and the rest of the stuff we're going to plant by hand. So on the popcorn, we're going with this robust 997 variety, which is supposed to be top of the line as far as popcorn goes. Got my seed plate there already made. This popcorn seed is tiny, tiny. I mean, it's just a hair bit bigger than an okra seed. So what I did is I took a number three plate, which I normally use for okra, and I drilled out the holes just a little bit because this is a little bit bigger than okra. And that should work pretty good. That's going to plant it pretty thick, but I always like to plant corn thick and come and thin it out if necessary. So hopefully we'll at least get a good stand planting it that way. And with the corn, we're going to take our cedar here and we're going to plant right on top of these ridges where the drip tape is buried. So right on top of the tape there. And these ridges will flatten out as we drive the cedar over the top of them. But we want to be able to feed that corn well. I like planting on single rows. I have seen it done on double rows, but we're going to do it on single rows, three foot spacing, planting right on top of that tape, which is actually running right now. All right, so corn is down. That was super fast. Now let's talk about the cucumbers and the summer squash that we're going to be succession planting. So the variety of cucumbers is a pickler called Supremo. And I found out about this variety um, from a seed supplier that actually serves a big commercial farm right down the road from here. And those guys traditionally grow Max Pack. And I've grown Max Pack before, and Max Pack is an awesome pickling cucumber variety. A lot of disease resistance, super, super productive, especially for a 
monoecious or non-gynoecious cucumber and he was saying that a lot of those guys were switching to this supremo because it's the closest thing they could find oh that wind got me it's the closest thing they could find to max pack and who knows it may even outperform max pack that would be quite the feat but we'll just have to see so that's why i'm growing this supremo uh, to see how it compares to the max pack which we've grown several times as far as the summer squash goes i asked you guys to tell me which varieties you wanted to see me plant we had some really good suggestions and there were a couple varieties that just you know had a lot more votes than the others one was more of a type this costata romanesca zucchini which i've never grown before evidently this is an italian zucchini type that has ridges on it supposed to have really really good flavor so i uh, got these from high mowing they were the only place i could find that had the the original op version of this so i got some of those and then while i was looking around online i found a hybrid version of costata romanesca and i thought hey wouldn't it be neat to compare the op to the hybrid and just see how much more productive the hybrid probably is than the op variety um, so we're going to do that we got this variety called pantheon that we're going to try as an op or excuse me as a hybrid costata romanesca then the winner the big winner was zephyr everybody wanted to see me plant zephyr so this is a um i think it's like a semi crook neck summer squash it's mostly yellow it's got a light green tip on it so growing that one and then i had a few people mention this variety and i'd never heard of it i kind of looked it up and just thought it was neat it's called goldfinch so it's a yellow squash variety but it's got this crazy kind of upright growth habit on it and the squash look like they almost kind of grow off the top of the plant instead of at the bottom anyway i thought it was interesting so we'd give it a try so i don't need a whole 30 foot row of these supremo pickling cucumbers if they produce like they're supposed to produce uh, i had a whole 40 foot row of max pack last year and it was just you, you couldn't even hardly give away that many pickling cucumbers so i'm going to do a half row of the cukes probably do the other half of the row in zephyr and then this other row we've got dedicated for squash or cucurbits we'll probably do a third costata romanesca a third of the hybrid pantheon i think that's what it's called and then a third of the goldfinch now for these squash and cucumbers i'm not really going to pay attention to where these emitters are we can see them right there but i've recently had better luck just planting along the row here you get plenty of water output that covers the gap so i'm not going to worry about where the emitters are and it's super super dry around here i mean really really dry and i think i might just turn on the overhead sprinkler on this plot to get everything germinated and, and just get some water in the ground here because it is so so dry so we're going to take these guys and uh as with everything i like to plant them pretty thick and i don't like to plant these right on top of the row like i did the corn some reason in the past if i plant like right on top of this emitter here i don't get very good germination i get a lot better germination kind of planting to the side of the tape with cucurbits corn seems to do just fine on the top and other stuff does with the cucurbits i get better germination planting a little bit to the side so that's what we're going to do here and we're just going to put these puppies in here thick because we're going to uh, provide a vertical trellis for them once they germinate get up and going so we can um, plant them thicker than if we were just letting them sprawl out on the ground Right, so squash and cukes are in the ground and i'm going to mention this on the video just so i have a mental note of it in case i forget what i planted this little crooked row here we got supremo cucumbers in the front first half zephyr squash the second half second row here we got the op costata romanesca goldfinch in the middle and then the pantheon hybrid costata romanesca on the end here and now for the peanuts i have never grown peanuts before there are thousands and thousands and thousands probably tens to hundreds of thousands of acres of peanuts grown around here in our county and the neighboring counties i've never grown peanuts i have eaten a boatload of boiled peanuts in my life and plan to continue to do so this year and that's why we're growing this valencia variety it's a really good boiling peanut variety surprisingly the only place online i could find these was the urban farmer site so hopefully these are good seeds 
So it's just got 85% germ on them. I did have one viewer say he got the exact same variety from the same company and he didn't get that great of germination. So we're gonna plant them extra thick just in case. I got a whole pound here for one double row of peanuts. We're just gonna plant one row, see how it goes. If it goes really well, heck, we may plant a whole plot of peanuts next year. We'll just have to see. So I've never grown these before. Don't know really know how to um, treat them as far as fertility goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat them just kind of like I do field peas. I know it's a legume. I know they'll fix their own nitrogen if the right uh, bacteria are present in the soil. So I'm gonna put some inoculant down. I'm gonna put some pre-plant fertilizer down, some 855 like I do with everything. Put a little bit of pre-plant in the furrow. And then hopefully they'll be nice and green and we won't really need to feed them anything else. Our field peas back there look nice we haven't really fertilized those so um, that's my plan with these peanuts if you've got any peanut growing tips out there definitely let me know about that growing them on the drip i think it's going to keep them nice and happy the commercial guys around here grow them on double rows so that's why i'm planting them on double rows now as far as our planting spot here this is where we had all those brassicas we harvested and mowed down a couple of videos ago i got those drip lines pulled back went in there and wheel hoed that still got a few weeds pesky ones wanting to come back there in the back so i'm going to do the peanuts on this row right here this first row i don't know what i'm going to do with this space right here yet i need to just uh unhook those drip lines put a plug in there until i decide what to plant there if you got any good suggestions definitely let me know i did have one viewer say that peanuts don't do well when planted near your field peas but I really don't have no choice at this point. Hopefully they are far enough apart where uh, that's not gonna be a problem. We'll just have to see. So anyway, I got the furrow made already. So what I need to do is just amend this furrow, lay that tape back down, bury it, and then we'll be ready to plant some peanuts. Now I mentioned I don't know a whole lot about growing peanuts, but I do know a few things. You got to plant them shelled. You don't want to plant peanuts with the shell on them. Some companies sell them with the shell on them and you got to shell them yourself, then plant them. Thankfully, these were already shelled, which I'm glad I didn't want to buy peanuts with the shell on them. That's kind of like buying a T-bone steak. Another thing is you don't want to plant these splits right here. You just kind of throw those away. You want to make sure you plant the whole peanut like that there don't plant those splits just trash those or snack on them whatever you want to do so i probably could plant these with the cedar but i'd have to make a custom plate and just for one row here i'm just going to come in here and i'm going to plant these things in thick the recommended spacing on these is six to eight inches but that one guy got me a little bit worried about the germination so i'm going to plant them thick and we'll thin them if we got to All right, so we got the peanuts in, and one more thing I do know about peanuts is that the seed doesn't hold its germ rate really well from one year to the next. So if you buy a bag of seed, you wanna go ahead and use it all because the germ rate can drop off pretty significantly from one year to the next. Onion seed is the same way. Field pea seed is the same way. I ordered a pound, and I've got about a half pound yet, half pound left. So I'm gonna wait and see how these come up. If these come up really good with really good germination to the point where I do have to thin them, I know that I got enough here to plant another row. So I'm gonna wait and see what happens here with these. And if everything comes up good, we'll find us another place to put one more row of these guys so we use all this seed. So the last thing I've got to plant today is something I wasn't planning on planting until I received some seeds in the mail. So I've got some heirloom okra seeds here. And the guy that sent me this didn't really have a name for the variety. It's just a variety that's been passed down through four generations, he said. And uh, so we're just gonna call it Ruiz Okra. That was his last name. He actually went to the same college I did, so that's pretty cool. Lives in Georgia. Sent me some of these seeds here. Uh, there's probably 30 or 40 seeds there. I'm not gonna plant all of these, but I got this little spot here on the back side of my arch panel trellis. It's probably about five feet, two rows worth there. And there's already drip tape in the ground there. 
So I already got irrigation there and we're gonna direct seed some of this heirloom okra. We're gonna call it Ruiz okra and we're gonna see what happens and then hopefully we can save our seeds over and over if this is really good stuff. And speaking of okra, I just noticed I've been slipping coming out here and checking my okra. I knew we were gonna have some ready any day now. Not all the plants have pods, but there's one right there. I'll just snap them off. That's your Jing orange okra right there, I believe. There's a bloom. We might have a nerding somewhere. There's one right there. There we go. Won't be long before we have us a mess. Now, usually I don't use drip tape at all on okra. I don't have any irrigation on that there. I've just been kind of hand watering it about once a week. Really doesn't need a lot of water. So, no tape on that. And the reason is, is the okra makes such deep roots that if you plant it on top of buried tape, you can almost, it's just tough to get the tape out from underneath it, even when you cut the stalk. So what I'm gonna do here to this buried tape, I'm gonna leave it buried on the beans there, obviously, but I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull it up right, you see there, right to there, to the start of that panel. I'm gonna lay it back down. And as much as I don't like to leave tape on top of the soil, I'm going to do it right here. So we're going to plant some okra on both sides, or excuse me, on one side of this tape here, and then I'll pull that one up one side of that tape there. All right, so I scratched me out a little furrow alongside this tape here, and I got about five feet to work with on both rows. So I'm probably going to plant about 10 of these seeds here just so I make sure I get a good stand and we'll probably thin them out to one every foot. I'll still have some seeds left. These should germinate really well. Uh, it's hot out here today. It's supposed to get to 97 next week. So these seeds should come up pretty quick. So we're just gonna put them in here. Like I said, probably six inches apart or so and we'll thin them out. I don't know what kind of germination we're gonna get on these, but we'll make sure to save some seeds if it's a good variety. Alright, alright, alright. Good to get that stuff planted. We just keep filling in the gaps. As spaces become available, we're going to fill them in at least until it gets really, really hot and then we'll start planting mostly cover crops. But until then, we're going to keep throwing vegetables in any spot or place we can find them. Still got to get our sweet potatoes in the ground. My slips hadn't got here yet. I delayed the shipment a couple weeks and you guys suggested some really good varieties so i'm growing georgia jet because i always grow that one you wanted me to grow some bush varieties so i've got vardaman ordered uh murasaki and there's one more i can't remember the name of it we'll know when it gets here but i got four different varieties i think 50 plants each uh we're gonna do a whole plot of sweet potatoes and so that should be exciting we'll have that coming up whenever those sweet potato plants arrive in the mail you never eaten okra raw really good i'd highly recommend trying it it's almost as good raw as it is fried and if you've got any heirloom vegetable varieties particularly heirloom okra that you'd like to see me try here in south georgia send me a message on facebook or instagram and we can connect and hopefully i can try it down here i'm always interested in kind of trying some of these heirloom okras and i really kind of want to build up a seed stock of all of these different varieties and be able to compare them so if you got something like that let me know if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe ring the bell like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.